we want to evaluate the indefinite integral. So looking at the integrand, notice how we have the square root of nine minus y to the fourth, which fits the form of the square root of a squared minus x squared. So we'll perform trig substitution to determine the antiderivative. Notice how in this case, a squared equals nine, so a equals three. We don't have x squared here, we have y to the fourth. So instead of letting x equal a sine theta, we'll have to let y squared equal a sine theta. And therefore, we'll perform the substitution y squared equals three sine theta. And now we'll find differential y. The derivative of a y squared with respect to y would be two y, so we have two y dy equals, the derivative of three sine theta would be three cosine theta, so we have three cosine theta d theta. Let's go ahead and solve this for y dy by dividing both sides by two. Now notice how we have y dy here, but we don't have y dy as part of our integral. So we'll deal with that in just a moment, but for right now, let's go ahead and model angle theta using this right triangle. So if y squared equals three sine theta, notice that if we solve this for sine theta, we'd have sine theta equals y squared divided by three. So if this is our angle theta, we can label the opposite side y squared, the hypotenuse three, and therefore this leg here would be equal to the square root of three squared minus y to the second squared, which would be nine minus y to the fourth. Now again, to perform this substitution and write this integral in terms of theta, we need to have a factor of y dy. So to get this extra factor of y in the numerator, we'll go ahead and multiply our integrand by y over y. So this would be equal to the integral of y times the square root of nine minus y to the fourth divided by y to the fourth dy and now we'll perform our substitutions. We know from our notes that by performing this substitution for y squared, the square root should simplify to three cosine theta, but let's go ahead and show that. So if we look at just the square root, we'd have the square root of nine minus y to the fourth, since we have y squared equals three sine theta, would be three sine theta squared, which gives us nine minus nine sine squared theta. We factor out the nine. We would have nine times the quantity one minus sine squared theta, which equals cosine squared theta. And notice how this does give us three cosine theta. So by performing the substitution, this square root simplifies to three cosine theta. Next, y dy is equal to three halves cosine theta d theta. But let's go ahead and factor out the one half. So we'll write this as one half, and then we'll have in the integrand three cosine theta, and of course d theta. So again, y dy equals one half times three cosine theta d theta. And now for our denominator, we have y to the fourth. Well, if y squared equals three sine theta, then y to the fourth would be nine sine squared theta. Now let's simplify and find our antiderivative on the next slide. Notice how here, these three simplify with the nine. So this gives us one half times integral of we'd have cosine squared theta divided by sine squared theta. Now I know this simplifies to cotangent squared theta, but we don't have an integration formula for a cotangent squared theta. So let's write this in terms of sine by substituting one minus sine squared theta for the numerator. So this would give us one half times integral of one minus sine squared theta divided by sine squared theta. And now if we break this up into two separate fractions, we would have one divided by sine squared theta minus sine squared theta over sine squared theta.
Notice how one over sine squared theta simplifies to cosecant squared theta, and there is an integration formula for cosecant squared theta. So we have one half times the integral of, again, cosecant squared theta, and of course sine squared theta divided by sine squared theta equals one, so we have minus one. And now we can find the antiderivative with respect to theta, this would be one half times the quantity the antiderivative of cosecant squared theta with respect to theta would be negative cotangent theta. The antiderivative of one with respect to theta would just be theta, so we have minus theta, of course, plus c. Now remember, we want to find the antiderivative with respect to y not theta, so now we'll perform a substitution for negative cotangent theta as well as theta. So if we go back to the previous slide, this is why this triangle is so helpful cotangent theta is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the opposite side, so it's equal to the square root of nine minus y to the fourth divided by y squared. So here we have one half times the quantity, we have negative square root nine minus y to the fourth divided by y squared. Now for theta we have a couple options. We could use any of the inverse trigonometric functions to represent theta. But let's go ahead and use this equation here, sine theta equals y squared divided by three. If sine theta is equal to y squared divided by three, we can take the inverse sine or arc sine on both sides of the equation, and therefore theta would be equal to arc sine of y squared divided by three. So we have minus arc sine of y squared divided by three. And again, we didn't have to use arc sine, but because we already had this equation for sine theta, it seemed the most obvious. Of course, then we still have plus c. So if we wanted to, we could distribute the one half. That would give us negative the square root of nine minus y to the fourth divided by two y squared minus one half arc sine of y squared divided by three plus c. So this integral did have some tricky substitutions that we had to be careful about. I hope you found this helpful.